Hey, my name's Aaron Robbins, and you're watching Research and Wonder. Today we're going to talk about Half Dome. So let's start off by stating the obvious. Half Dome is a really big rock made up of quartz, feldspar, and a little bit of mica. You're like, obviously, it's called granite. What I really want to know is how it got there. Well, that's a great question. And as far as we can tell, a really, really, really long time ago, which I'm going to indicate with this little dinosaur guy here, a large pocket of magma, which is basically lava beneath the Earth's surface, cooled and solidified into what would become Half Dome. Now you're like, hey, if it's below the surface, how come I can see it? Well, that's a fair question. Over the course of time, some plate tectonic action, erosion, maybe some glacial activity. See my glacier there? He's like, I'm king of the world. Well, all that stuff cleared away and carved out and pushed up gigantic rocks like Half Dome. How far did it push it up? Man, you're full of good questions. Well, if this is sea level, then Half Dome Summit is about 8,842-ish feet above it, give or take like five feet. Now I get it, the elevation of Half Dome isn't all that exciting because let's face it, when you're on top of Half Dome, you can't see the sea, so what you really wanna know is how tall it is. Okay, if you're camping here at Upper Pines Campground in Yosemite, a nice setup by the way, the Half Dome would tower 5,000 feet above you. Looks big, right? Yeah, it does. In fact, this guy right here, well, his name is Josiah Whitney, and in 1870, he said that Half Dome was perfectly inaccessible, which to me means unclimbable. Nice, Josiah. Now I have to make you go away with this little magic puff of clouds thing because just five years later, this guy, George Anderson, bolted a line up the northeast slope and became the first person to stand on top of this perfectly inaccessible rock. I know, I know, you're like, bolts? That's cheating, and he didn't even go up the main face. Okay, settle down. Back then, the standards of rock climbing were not all that well defined. In fact, in 1919, the National Park Service installed fixed bolts and cables near Anderson's original route to allow tourists to climb up Half Dome. Still, you're like, I don't want to climb up the side, I want to climb up the main face. Well, that's just what these guys did. That's Royal Robbins, no relation, Mike Sherrick, and Jerry Galwas. And in the late 1950s, they decided they'd climb up the main northwest face of Half Dome. When asked about the climb, Royal said, We feared the enormity of the wall. We dreaded having to reach so deeply within ourselves and maybe find ourselves lacking. Well, lacking they were not, because in late June 1957, the three climbers scaled all 2,000 feet of the northwest face. It took them five days and 23 pitches of grade 5 climbing to reach the top. Cable route isn't sounding all that bad right now, huh? Well, keep in mind that the cable route requires a special permit and an 8-plus mile uphill hike just to reach the base of the 400 feet of wickedly steep cables that just a few minutes ago you called cheating. Regardless of how you get there, once you're on top, make sure you know the difference between the visor and the diving board. This rocky outcropping here is called the visor. The diving board, where Ansel Adams took the picture monolith face of Half Dome on April 10th, 1927, well, it's actually located on the shoulder of Half Dome way over here. All right, you've made it to the top of Half Dome. You've got your picture taken on the visor. Now all you gotta do is make it back down safely, get yourself to a gift shop, and pick up an I Made It To The Top t-shirt. My name is Aaron Robbins. This is Research and Wonder, and hey, you know, let's hang out again sometime.